JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 24th. I am Harlan Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. So, what are we going to talk about today? Uh, we will talk about the EU and US markets, which uh, closed in the red territory, but the Asian ones uh, rebounded. Uh, we'll talk about the retreat of the US dollar. All this had to do with the Fed unveiling more aggressive uh, uh, stimulus measures in order to safeguard the, its economy, the US economy from the fast spreading coronavirus. The coronavirus keeps spreading fast. We have record uh, new uh, infected cases and new deaths. We will see that in a while. And as for today, uh, we get the preliminary PMIs, uh, which are expected to show how deep the economic wounds are. Uh, with regards to the rest of the events, we get the UK CBI industrial trends orders, the US new home sales, the American Petroleum Institute weekly report on crude oil, and we also have one speaker. Now, as for tonight, uh, we get uh, during during the Asian morning um, Wednesday, we get uh, a New Zealand's trade balance for February. As always, let's start with the performance of the greenback. The dollar traded lower against the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian morning Tuesday. It gained only versus. Uh, the pound and the yen while it was found virtually unchanged against the Canadian dollar. The currency underperformed, the US dollar underperformed against uh, NOC, Aussie, Kiwi, SEC, Euro, and the Swiss franc in that uh, order. Now, the strengthening of the risk linked currencies, uh, the relative weakness of the yen, and the modest the modest gains of the franc and the euro against uh, the dollar suggest uh, that uh, risk aversion is somewhat at some point. Indeed, if we see the performance in the equity world, we see that uh, major EU and US indices closed in negative territory, uh, but Asian bourses rebounded and ended in the green today. Uh, yesterday, the Federal Reserve announced uh, programs uh, considered, considered as never seen before intervention into the US economy. The committee announced that it will purchase corporate bonds, backstop direct loans to companies, and uh, will soon initiate a program to, to provide credit to small and medium-sized businesses. They also announced that they will purchase unlimited amounts of uh, treasuries and agency market budget mortgage-backed securities in order to allow proper functioning of the U.S. Uh, debt, debt market. Now, EU and U.S. indices saw modest gains after the announcement, but fears over a possible recession due to the damages caused by the fast-spreading coronavirus overshadowed the announcement on, uh, of the newly adopted measures, allowing investors to keep abandoning stocks. Another reason why U.S. indices closed negative may have been the U.S. Senate's failure to agree on a two trillion U.S. dollars economic stimulus package. That said, U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin hinted that nothing is lost, noting that a deal uh, will be reached soon. So this, alongside the new measures by the Fed, may have eventually prompted, prompted uh, some equity buying during the Asian session today. Now, as uh, for our view, 
we repeat for the upteenth time that monetary and fiscal stimulus may not be enough to spark a long-lasting recovery in the broader market sentiment. For this to happen, consumers have to get out of their homes and start spending, while businesses have to start investing on new plans. With the virus keep spreading at a fast pace and uh, with uh, new infected cases and new deaths hitting fresh records day by day, by day we see this as a, very, as a very hard task. We can see here the graph. We have uh, the, the difference on a day by day, the absolute uh, number on a day, uh, on a day by day in deaths, and case, in deaths and cases. And you can see that on a daily basis, we keep hitting uh, re record highs in new infected cases and new and new deaths in, with an exponential uh, pace. Now, the, moving on, the restrictive measures are getting tighter and tighter with mass lockdowns and layoffs depend, deepening the wounds of the global economy. With regards to the US economy, economic activity, investors may be eager may be eager to find out uh, the number of the initial jobless claims for uh, last week, the forecast of which suggests an increase to 1 million from 281k the week before. Imagine if the actual print comes out higher than the forecast. This would mean that the world's largest economy is getting hit much more severely than, than uh, many have been anticipating. Having said that though, Ahead of uh, the claims, market participants may pay close attention to the, to the preliminary PMIs for the month of March, which are due to be released um, uh, today. During the European morning, we get the preliminary manufacturing and services prints from several Eurozone nations in the blog as a whole. The Euro Area Manufacturing Index is forecast to have fallen to 39 from 49.2 while the services one is anticipated to have slammed to 38.4 from 52.6. This will drive the composite index down to 37.8 from 51.6. You can see the graph here. We have the manufacturing, the services and the composite indices alongside the Eurozone GDP, the year over year rate of uh, Eurozone GDP. And you can see the forecasts point to a huge slump, which may lead uh, the growth rate into uh, contractionary territory. We get preliminary PMIs for March, for March from the UK as well. Both the manufacturing and services indices are anticipated to have declined to 45 from 51.7 and 53.2 respectively, with the composite um, index expected to have fallen uh, to, to 45.1 from uh, 53. More PMIs will be released later in the day, this time from the US. The manufacturing index is expected to have declined to 43 from 50.7, while the services one is anticipated to, to have slid to 42 from 49.4. Now, the fact that uh, the PMIs are forecast to have tumbled well into the contractionary territory is not a surprise and such slumps may not prove major market movers this time around unless the actual prints are much worse than the already very bad uh, forecasts. With the virus spreading extremely fast outside China during the month of March, investors are already prepared for economic consequences during the first quarter of the year. The big question is whether the wounds would get deeper during the second quarter. As we have been repeatedly noting, we do expect the damages to drag into, into quarter two. With no vaccine ready to be ready to be distributed yet, nations are likely to maintain and even tighten their, their restrictive measures, something that inevitably may continue hurting uh, economic activity. Now, as for the markets, with all that in mind, we stick to our guns that equities may not have uh, may not may not have hit a bottom yet. We repeat that it would be naive uh, to assume that uh, this, whole term oil, this whole term oil is already fully priced in. Thus, we, will, uh, we would treat uh, any small recoveries as corrective uh, waves before the next leg south. Safe havens like the yen, the franc and the euro may also benefit against their uh, ris risk-linked counterparts, but we expect the greenback to reclaim its throne as uh, the FX uh, king and probably outperform even the traditional havens uh, 
the yen and the franc in a leverage world another um, uh, in, in a leverage world another uh, another round of panic would uh, likely prompt investors to liquidate positions everywhere which in a dollar denominated uh, market means buying back uh, dollars in order to cover losses and margin calls now as for the rest of uh, today's events apart from the pmis we get the uk cbi industrial trend orders for march and the forecast points to a decline further into the negative territory specifically this index is, is expected to have slid to minus 30 from minus 18 in february the u.s new home sales for february are also due to be released and the expectations are for a for a 2.3 percent uh, month over month decline after a 7.9 percent increase in january with regards to the energy market the american petroleum institute report on crude oil inventories for last week is coming out but but as it is always the case no forecast is available and as for tonight uh, during the asian morning wednesday new zealand's trade balance for february is due to be released but no forecast is provided here either we also have one speaker on today's agenda and this is uh, st louis fed president uh, james bullard so thank you that's it uh, from me thank you very much for uh, for watching and listening for those who are interested in learning in learning about the main events of the week much earlier you can subscribe to the weekly market outlook webinar which i'm hosting every monday at 8 o'clock a.m gmt time you can find the link in the description below now at this point i have to let you know that we will not have a daily market review video tomorrow so goodbye from me have a great day and i will see you again on thursday JFT, just fair and direct.